Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's Indigo China and I am here again to answer some questions that you guys ask me via Telenim. I have my laptop right here and let's get into it. So the first question is what can I do if I am being bullied? So if you're being bullied the first thing you can do is tell someone about it and make sure that this person that you tell is someone that you trust and who you can comfortably confide in. So that could be a teacher, a parent, a friend, brother, sister, auntie, grandmother, uh, a work colleague, whoever it is, because I don't know your circumstance if you're asking this for yourself. So yeah, it's just anyone that you feel comfortable um, opening up to about this. And once you've told someone, I hope that will relieve any stress off of your chest. And then the second step would be to find a solution that works for you to put an end to the bullying. Now, when you tell someone about it, maybe they can help you do that. But if you've already done that and talking about it and opened up about it to someone else hasn't helped you, then you may want to consider other options such as standing up to the bullies. Again, I don't know your specific circumstance, but I know that when I was younger and I was dealing with bullying, uh, what worked for me is standing up for myself and just making it very clear that I'm not going to be taking any shit from anyone anymore and that's when the bullying stopped. And also, as I mentioned in the first point, telling someone about what was going on also put a stop to the bullying because the person that was doing it knew that other people knew about it and they also knew that I was standing up for myself rather than keeping quiet about it. So if someone's bullying you online and it's via text or it's via messages, uh, I would definitely say to report it. Uh, whatever platform you're using, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, report it to them so that they also are aware of it and can handle it in whatever way they uh, see fit. As hard as it is to ignore things, it's easier to say than to do it, I would definitely try to ignore it and not pay so much attention to it and not dwell on it. I know it's easier said than done but I think that can also help as well because when you're not so caught up in what another person is saying it just kind of rolls off your back. It's like what's that saying water off the duck's back right? So if you can uh, work towards harnessing that kind of mindset it's also helpful in the long run but by no means ignore the fact that they're bullying you I just mean not to allow someone else's words to have an emotional effect or impact on you because we are all in control of how we feel and our emotions and etc. And again, it's another cliche, but no one can actually make us feel a certain way unless we give them that power to do so. So yeah, the opposite to ignoring it is to talk about it. If the bully is someone that you're actually close with, and you know this person, you may have known them for a while and they start being nasty towards you, perhaps after they've calmed down you can try to talk about it with them and tell them how it makes you feel and maybe through conversation and through having a genuine back and forth discussion on you know what they're doing or what they're saying and how it isn't right and how it makes you feel, maybe doing that can uh, either lessen it or put an end to it completely. But to summarise everything that I just said, number one is to tell someone about it, someone that you trust and who you can confide in. Number two is to report it, especially if it's on an online platform such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. And then number three is to ignore it or work towards not allowing people to create such a negative emotional response from you, if that is the case. And then number four, is to talk it out with the person, especially if you know them, if they're a friend, a family member. And all of these tips really just depends on what kind of bullying it is and who it's from. And is it really, really aggressive? Is it hostile? That really depends, but this is just some general advice and I hope it helps. If you want more advice and you want some support on this, please go to www.bullying.co.uk and they have a section where you can email someone, tell them about your situation, and it's all confidential. And yeah, I hope that helps. So the next question I received is, is life fair? This question is like a loaded potato. <laughs> loaded in the sense that 
Oh gosh, there's so many layers to it. There's so many freaking toppings I could put on that whole topic right there. But for the purposes of this video, I want to keep it short and sweet. And do keep in mind that if there's any question I answer or any topic that I cover in these Q&A sessions that you want me to delve deeper into, just leave a comment below and I can. I can do that in a separate video. But to answer the question, is life fair? Well, I would first say, what is your definition of fair? Because, um, and that's F-A-I-R. I'm aware that my accent makes things sound a bit different. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what's your definition of fair? I personally don't have one. So, I see life as being fair. I see it as being unfair. I see it as everything in between. Life is what you make of it. And if you're looking at uh, fairness in the sense of self-interest, then maybe life isn't going to be fair to you or it's not going to seem fair to you. But if you're looking at it from like a wider perspective of we're all connected, we are all one, we all share consciousness, then life may very well be fair because we are all putting in what we're getting out of it. And when I look at it from a collective consciousness point of view, yeah, life can be considered fair. We're all thinking certain thoughts and we're contributing to this collective melting pot of thoughts which are attracting everything to us therefore it is fair because we are the ones who are creating and attracting everything to us okay if you look at it from that perspective you can say life is fair if you look at it from a different perspective and you're like woe is me why am i always the one who has this happen to me that happened to me why has life not dealt me a fair hand why is it that she has this, I can't, why does he do that and when I do it, it's not. If you have that kind of mindset, then life is not fair. <laughs> like literally, life is genuinely not fair for you and it's just based off of everything that you're thinking and attracting to yourself. That's how I look at it. So in my opinion, life is whatever you think it is. And also, I personally don't look at things as being fair or unfair. I always have said it is what it is, like when something happens, happens to me or to someone else, I don't go, oh, that's so unfair. I'm just like, eh, it is what it is. We just move forward. That's how I look at things. So moving on to the next question. One thing that a lot of people don't know about you. One thing that a lot of people don't know about me. Um, probably a lot that people don't know about me. Um, Nothing actually comes to mind right now. Because, <laughs> uh, like, there's this thing, right, where a lot of people know that I'm autistic on the spectrum, have Asperger's syndrome, I'm neurodiverse, whatever, right? Um, and then there's a lot of people that don't know that. So where do I draw the line between... <laughs> between what is a lot of people and what isn't a lot of people like there seems to be an equal amount of people that know I'm on the spectrum versus those that don't know and I'm referring to people that are in my life who I know who I speak to I'm not referring to okay the greater public or strangers or whatever but if I do a comparison between how many people know I'm on the spectrum and how many people don't know it's kind of even and that's kind of the the same for other things about myself that a lot of people don't know. So <laughs> I just make these questions more difficult than they are really. But yeah, there's a lot of things that a lot of people don't know about me. But then those things that those people don't know about me, a lot of people do know about me. So it really just depends on the person. And I know that I've complicated this question. So to simplify it, I would say, <laughs> I would say, one thing that not a lot of people know about me is, let me just pick something random, um, is that I have a very dark sense of humour, okay, I go there, I go to all of the places that people don't want to go to, and I have the ability to laugh at literally anything that you can think of, as long as it's um, done tastefully in a comedic way, then yeah, I will get some laugh out of the uh, anything that's kind of dark or like other people would be like oh that's not funny whereas me I'd be like oh that's hilarious so yeah that's one thing that a lot of people don't know about me 
would you think it's weird if a woman got a man a rose? If you've watched my previous video, I mentioned something about not caring about genders. So my immediate kind of internal response is, it doesn't matter if it's a man getting a woman a rose or a woman getting a man a rose or a man getting a man a rose or a woman getting a woman a rose <laughs> and so on and so forth. It doesn't matter. If you're a human being getting another human being a rose because you want to, then uh, it's not weird. It's, it just is what it is. You're just getting them a rose to perhaps show your appreciation or you're just doing it because you thought of them when you saw that rose. I don't know what reason you would do it for, but um, if you want to get someone a rose, then that's cool. It's not weird at all, in my opinion. What is your favourite genre of music? I like all kinds of music. I studied music at college as well as at GCSE level, so I like to think that contributes to my appreciation for all genres. And when I say all genres, I literally mean all genres. I'm just going to put my laptop down because it's a bit, a bit heavy, you know, for my petite frame. Um, so when I say all genres, I literally mean that from rock, rap, hip hop, soul, R&B, country, neo soul, jazz, blues, um, pop. Did I say rap? I feel like I did. Um, screamo. I can appreciate the technique that uh, vocal artists use to provide that, that scream. And it's one where it's, it's going to allow them to, you know, keep producing that vocal quality over time, not one that's going to damage their vocal cords. So I can appreciate that. I love um, certain aspects of certain genres as well, such as the gent. I think that's pretty awesome. I also love dubstep. I love house. I love funky house. I love basement music, dancehall, bashment, reggae, uh, world music. I love freaking Indian music, Spanish, salsa, reggaeton, um, Spanish, French, German. I'm just listening off countries. <laughs> but yeah, you get the point. I like all genres of music and I have no favoritism towards any genre. And something in general that you should know about me is that I don't really do favoritism when it comes to anything. So I don't have any favourite movies, I don't have any favourite styles, I don't have any favourite foods, I don't have any favourite um, colours. Like I always say that my favourite colour is blue, but that's only because it's one that I resonate to and I think it describes my personality quite well because I'm a very calm, uh, natured person. And also it relates back to my zodiac sign as well. So yeah, but really I love all colours. I think um, they can be beautiful and also I love my neutral colours as well. So I, I don't really have a, a true favourite when it comes to anything. So that's just um, for future reference for anyone watching now who's going to ask me what's your favourite this or that. I don't have one. So yeah, moving on to the next question. <laughs> I can see here that there's a few questions where it's like, What's your favourite this? What's your favourite that? After I just... <laughs> that was funny. Um, I don't mind answering them. I'm just I'm just letting you know that if anyone here is watching who's going to ask me a question in the future, just know that I don't have a favourite thing. Uh, so my answer is going to be the same. I'm just going to be listing off a bunch of things that I really like. And uh, yeah, but moving on to the next question. What is your favourite food? I am vegan and I like all kinds of food as long as it is vegan and vegan yes just vegan don't have a favorite uh cuisine i like all types of cuisines for example i love chinese food i love thai food japanese jamaican bajan guyanese food uh spanish italian your typical american food uh, we all know that they stole that. <laughs> we all know that American food is just basically uh, a melting pot of all of the different cuisines melded together. And yeah, I really like Portuguese food, Eritrean food with the injera and the isera what's with the lentils. Um, I'm trying to think what, what other food, what other cuisines are there? I just like it all. As long as it's good vegan food, honestly, I don't mind. 
Um, I just eat based off of how I'm feeling at the moment because, you know, right now I might feel like a pizza with some chips, uh, some pasta and a side salad with some garlic bread. Tomorrow I might just feel like having some hard food with some plantain, rice and peas, some ackee, some callaloo, some bell peppers, some mushroom curry. Um, I don't know. Just depends on how I feel really. But yeah, it's just a resounding, I don't have a favourite um, food. I think I would really struggle if someone was like, pick one food to live off of for the next six months or something, something like that, right? I just wouldn't know because I, I can't even choose a favourite cuisine, let alone like a favourite piece of food, like one singular piece of food. Oh my god, it's like I like bananas, oranges, tomatoes, plums, fruit. Oh, I'm gonna start listing off like things that I like again so you just get the gist. I just, <laughs> I don't have a favourite thing to consume, shall we say. Um, I like it all as long as it's good. The next question is, do you have a favourite day of the week? My answer is no. I don't have a favourite day of the week and I'm not sure why I would because time is an illusion and I'm just going to go off on a very stereotypical... <laughs> it's, it's very stereotypical of me because people that know me like you know that I think time is an illusion. Like This whole world that we're in is an illusion. So for me to say I have a favourite day of the week, I'm buying into that illusion because what even is a day of the week when you think about it? It's just something that us as humans, as a society, have said, oh, okay, this one's going to be Monday, this one's going to be Tuesday, this one's going to be Wednesday. But when you really look at it, they're all just stretches of time. Um, they're all just moments that happen. We just uh, put labels and names to them to help us remember when we're going to be doing certain things, when we're going to be having our appointments, our meetings, when we're going to be hanging out with certain people. It's just there for practical reasons, so I don't have a, a favourite day of the week. The last question is, what is the oldest thing that you own? So the oldest thing that I own, let me just put my laptop down. Yeah, the oldest thing that I own is my brain. <laughs> I just, uh, I just can't answer questions today. I'm just in one of those moods, right? The oldest thing I own though, like physically, I'm pretty sure there is something, there's got to be something that's very old that I own. Oh. Hey, okay, I got something. The oldest thing I own is a towel that my brother gave me. And I say it's the oldest thing because number one, he gave it to me over 10 years ago. That's already a length of time there. Number two, He's probably owned that towel for over five to ten years, so that's like even more time just added up on that. So I would say that is probably the oldest thing that I own. But you know, it's kind of funny because my knee-jerk response to that question was just going to be, you know, my soul is definitely the oldest thing that I own. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is the end of uh, today's question and answer session, and I hope you enjoyed. Please ask more questions and please keep your autistic confessions coming in because I've realised that there's an uneven amount of questions to um, confessions and I think, you know, I originally started this up for it to be a autism confession corner and it's turned more into a um, indigo talks at the camera and answers questions kind of thing, which I don't mind. I like it. I find it fun and interesting, and I think the questions are pretty cool. Um, but I would also like to get the Autistic Confessions Corner thing running and rolling. So, yeah, that's why I keep on encouraging you guys to put your confessions in uh, if you feel comfortable and if that's something that you want to do. Thank you to everyone that's watched this video, and thank you to those who posted the questions for me to answer. Um, as always, keep them coming and I shall see you in another video.